Hello and welcome to NDTV 24-7. I'm Rohit Billington. Let's begin with our top story. India recorded 4.14 lakh COVID cases on Friday, a record high and over 4 lakh for the third time in a week. This on a day when the government's top scientific advisor said that India may manage to dodge a deadly third wave of the coronavirus if necessary steps are taken. His comments were a step down from Wednesday when he had warned that while it is not clear at what time scale the phase 3 will occur, but a phase 3, which is essentially a third wave, is inevitable. That's what he said on Wednesday. Now, a step down from those comments. If we take strong measures, the third wave may not happen in all the places or indeed anywhere at all. It depends much on how effectively the guidance is implemented at the local level, in the states, in districts, and in the cities, everywhere. Now, this sounds difficult, it is difficult, but we can and must do this. When the virus runs out of opportunities, infections fall. The virus runs out of opportunities if the number of people it can potentially infect is lower drastically. This happens because people who have been infected earlier are unlikely to be reinfected for a while. People who are vaccinated are protected. And people who wear, masks, who wear masks are distant from each other, isolated from those who are infectious. They are also protected. Now, Delhi Chief Minister Arvind Kejriwal on Friday said that the capital's crippling shortage of oxygen has been resolved and announced plans to vaccinate the entire city within three months. This after a meeting with his cabinet ministers to discuss the crisis that has led to thousands of deaths in the past few weeks. Now, he said that now there is no lack of oxygen in Delhi. We should have enough oxygen beds so that no patient is deprived. First Delhi, now Karnataka. The Supreme Court has intervened and ordered the centre to allocate more oxygen to both. Both are among the worst hit by COVID currently. In Karnataka, the High Court had directed the centre to increase the oxygen allocation to 1,200 metric tonnes per day. Instead of obeying the order, the centre immediately challenged it, arguing in the Supreme Court today that if every High Court starts passing orders, it will lead to chaos across the country and it is unworkable. Let High Courts distribute oxygen as we have limited quantity. But dismissing the centre's arguments, the court said, we cannot leave the people of Karnataka in the lurch. It is a well-calibrated exercise by the High Court. Karnataka's minimum requirement according to the state is 1100 metric tons. Dealing with the oxygen crisis in Delhi, the top court warned the centre, saying do not force us to take coercive action. You have to allocate 700 metric tons per day till further orders. Centre put lot of caveats on tankers. We will not go into that. We are not drivers. With Arunachal from Vedanathan in New Delhi, Rohit Wellington for NDTV. Now, Karnataka has announced a two-week lockdown amid a surge in COVID cases. In, order, in an order issued on Friday, the BS Yadirapa government said that the lockdown will be from 6 a.m. on the 10th of May to 6 a.m. on the 25th of May. The movement of essential goods and services are allowed and shops selling groceries can remain open from 6 a.m. to 6 p.m. That's what the government has said. But shops and other commercial units like hotels, pubs, bars and industries that are not directly related to providing essential services will have to pull down their shutters. Now, the decision comes as the state reported 592 deaths, highest single-day deaths ever. It also reported 48,781 new cases. Karnataka currently has a positivity rate of 30.69%. Now, shifting focus to Maharashtra, which is now preparing for the third COVID wave. The Brihan Mumbai Municipal Corporation and Maharashtra government are setting up now pediatric COVID care wards in the capital city, Mumbai. The Maharashtra government has now started preparations for the third wave following warnings from the center's top scientific advisors. According to Health Minister Rajesh Tope, the third wave will have the biggest impact on children under the age of 18 and now preparations are being done for it. Maniya Mukhyamantri ji ne kal raat ko 10-11 baje bahut late hours tak 
मुंबई के और अन्य पीडियाट्रिशियन से भी बैठक ली है हम एक पीडियाट्रिशियन टास्क फोर्स बना रहे हैं क्योंकि 18 साल के आगे के लोगों के लिए हम टीकाकरण कर रहे हैं लेकिन 18 साल के नीचे के उम्र के लोगों बच्चों में टीकाकरण नहीं हो रहा है Which is why the government says it is beginning to stock up on medicines and equipment like ventilators for children. A pediatric task force is being set up. हम उनके लिए खास तौर पर SNCU जो beds है, वो SNCU beds हम खास तौर पर लगा रहे हैं और दूसरी बात ये भी है कि pediatric task force हम बना रहे हैं, उनका जो मार्गदर्शन रहेगा, उनकी जो भी guideline रहेंगे, उनके मुताबिक हम उसके मेडिसिंस जो लगेंगे क्योंकि बच्चों के लिए अलग तरीके से मेडिसिंस लग सकते हैं उनके वेंटिलेटर्स अलग तरीके से होते हैं द नंबर ऑफ चिल्ड्रन इन्फेक्टेड इन द सेकंड वेव हैज इंक्रीज्ड कंपेयर्ड टू द फर्स्ट वेव इन द लास्ट 10 डेज देयर हैव बीन मोर देन 400 चिल्ड्रन इन मुंबई अंडर 10 इयर्स ऑफ एज हु हैव बीन इन्फेक्टेड एंड इवन बिफोर द थर्ड वेव द महाराष्ट्र गवर्नमेंट सीम्स टू बी टेकिंग स्टेप्स रिगार्डिंग दिस इशू With Sohit Mishra and Rajendra Dayalkar in Mumbai, Anusya Mathur for NDTV. Now, a few hours after assuming office, Tamil Nadu new Chief Minister M K Stalin announced that his government will bear the cost of coronavirus treatment for patients admitted in private hospitals, a promise made by his party, the DMK, ahead of the assembly elections. Mutthuvel Karana Nidhi Stalin Enum Nan. On a day when DMK Chief M.K. Stalin took oath as Chief Minister, the scene outside the government Rajiv Gandhi Hospital reflecting the biggest challenge for the new Chief Minister. Outside the COVID block of the government Rajiv Gandhi Medical College Hospital in Chennai, at any point in time, around 8 to 10 ambulances wait with critical patients requiring hospitalization. And it takes anywhere between one and three hours today to get a bed. Mahendran had to wait two hours in the ambulance before he could get a bed. His father, Mahalingam, says he had to be shifted from a small hospital where he was for the last three days as he needed oxygen support. <laughs> At Chennai's Government Stanley Medical College Hospital, 150 oxygen beds have been added in the outpatient ward. These zero delay oxygen points reduce the wait time in ambulances before they are allotted beds. Some time delay is happening. We try to provide them an oxygen cylinder to maintain the uh, their status, clinical status. If they are severe, there is no waiting time at all. They will be immediately wheeled inside. Doctors attend to patients in ambulances and move them after evaluating their condition. Initially, uh, here patients may wait four to six hours like, like that. Now we are reduced the waiting time to around one to one and a half hours to two hours. Within two hours, we are taking all the patients inside. Soon after taking charge, the new chief minister announced that COVID treatment cost for the poor would be covered under the state's health insurance scheme, both at government and private hospitals. Chennai is reporting nearly 7,000 COVID cases every day, and the state has a positivity rate of over 16%. In Chennai with Shah Vijay, Sam Daniel, Find the TV. Meanwhile, in Kerala, the focus is on saving lives. There's real-time tracking in Kerala's oxygen war rooms, as Neha Koshi found out. At this district COVID war room in Kochi, now shifted to the integrated command center, larger-than-life screens project the latest numbers in terms of capacity occupancy, oxygen beds, oxygen availability. And for our update, data audit directly with each hospital in the district. Their primary focus also now, anything linked to oxygen in the district. Initially, two weeks back when the surge happened, initially there were some distress calls. But now we distress have... Distress calls from? From a hospital saying that there might be oxygen running out. But uh, we have been able to mobilize oxygen till now. And for that, we have formally created a war room for the past one and a half weeks. And it has been functioning well. We have given another hotline for all the hospitals in case 
they are in terms of running out in form of six hours before. And as the numbers clock closer to the threshold level, efforts are ramped up to increase capacity. Involving private hospital occupancy, a reason officials claim why a direct call to the hospitals may not get the patient's bed easily anymore. At the same time, we are also increasing our capacity. For example, today we started a new specialty block in government hospital in Nakulam, which uh, can cater up to almost 150 oxygen beds and about 18, uh, 18 ICUs. Similarly, we are planning to uh, uh, you know, set up almost 1,000 beds in another facility. A model followed across districts where patients are referred to them for shifting to hospitals from various sources. Here, including this telemedicine center at Ernakulam General Hospital, where doctors round the clock are categorizing COVID-positive patients from the district into A, B, C category. That would decide the medical response they receive from the district war room's shifting team. But it is not easy enjoy coming here also but at times when all the cases start uh, pending up a lot then even we feel stressed out and we are feeling helpless at times because we are not able to shift accordingly people are panicking and that gets to us also at times why are you not able to shift accordingly uh, sometimes there is a lack of beds sometimes uh, that like from private hospitals we are not being able to shift to the government hospitals because there aren't enough beds there so then we started the whole cast which is the government insurance in the private hospitals so it's better now it's better now in first uh, we had only uh, 200 300 calls in the initial time and now this the second wave now we are dealing with uh, 900,000, 1,200 calls per day. The patients uh, who are calling is most of the patients are symptomatic, uh, you know, breathlessness. And now the main change is the young people, 35, 36, 41, 42 people are affecting this uh, disease. War rooms like these across districts in Kerala are supposed to be the point of surveillance and troubleshooting. They're supposed to be able to take the load of the state as COVID-19 cases surge to its peak. But it's going to be the test of time that they will have to pass to see whether the system has been able to hold itself. With camera person SP Babu, Sneha Koshi for NDTV. The government of Telangana has issued orders saying that in view of rising cases, there should be no more than 100 people in marriage celebrations, no more than 20 at funerals, and all public gatherings, social, political or religious are banned. This comes even as just uh, in the afternoon on Friday, there was a huge gathering at the Mecca Masjid near the Char Minar for Friday afternoon prayers last Friday before Eid. Many people were not wearing masks. There were hundreds gathered with no social distancing. This at a time when Telangana is reporting over 6,000 cases every day and Hyderabad seeing over 1,000 cases daily. The rising number of deaths in the country and the national capital remains a cause for concern. We've been bringing you reports of how the crematoriums and burial grounds are overburdened. But how are the people who work there coping with this? There are young men, including some as young as 19, working at the crematoriums. NDTV's Meher Pandey went to Ghazipur crematorium in the national capital and spoke to crematorium workers there. A 19-year-old crematorium worker is building his seventh pyre of the day at Ghazipur crematorium in West Delhi. He works in the dedicated COVID section of the crematorium without any PPE. The flames are too hot and too close to wear a plastic suit. He didn't want us to reveal his name because of the social stigma attached to this work, which is usually performed by people of the scheduled castes. Far from home in Ayodhya, UP, he works more than 12 hours a day and sleeps on the premises. जो हमें आराम करने का टाइम नहीं मिलता रात के 12 12:30 बजे तक उसके बाद 12:30 बजे के बाद हम सोते हैं खाना वाना खा के फिर 5 बजे सुबह उठना पड़ता है साफ सफाई करना फिर उसके बाद जो अस्थियां लेने आते हैं सुबह उन्हें अस्थियां देनी पड़ती है उसके बाद फिर 10 बजे क्रिमेशन स्टार्ट करते हैं लेकिन डर भी है और काम भी करना है हमें तो और जो है क्रिमेशन करवाना पड़ता है आप क्या रह गए जी हमें देखो थोड़ा 
डर तो था लेकिन हमें काम भी वो करना था हम काफ़ी दिन से यहाँ हैं तो जैसे हमें अचानक नहीं जा सकते छोड़ कर जिम्मेदारियाँ थी ऊपर कि हमें ऐसे काम करना है यहाँ का हम छोड़ के चले जाएंगे तो यहाँ थोड़ी जो आने वाली पब्लिक है यहाँ आएगी बॉडी आएंगी तो उन्हें परेशानी होगी आप उन्हें करने से काम He has left the cremation ground only twice in the last two months, as he needs to be available almost 24 hours a day, as the COVID-19 death toll in Delhi reaches record highs. Bodies also arrive here from the neighbouring UP. He says he can't think too deeply about these deaths. I have to do my own. We do it. And a little bit. I am asking you to ask me. नहीं मानसिक ज़्यादा हम दिमाग पे जोर नहीं लेते हैं ठीक है जी जो काम हमें करना है वो हम आराम से करते हैं The priest here Ram Karan Mishra told us that the workers did not have the time to get vaccinated टीका नहीं लगा वैक्सीन कोई है यहाँ पे कोई उपलब्ध नहीं कि कराया वैक्सीन तो यहाँ भी हम लोगों को किसी को टीका नहीं लगा लगवाना चाहते हैं अ डेड बॉडी आती है बहुत समस्या हम लोगों के पास टाइम नहीं है सरकार को तो पता है सारी बात कहाँ वैक्सीन पहुँचानी कहाँ नहीं पहुँचानी है बाकी अब क्या बताएं सरकार को वर्कर्स योर आर पेड बिटवीन टेन टू फिफ्टीन थाउजेंड रुपीज अ मंथ एंड नॉन फेल्ट कंफर्टेबल शेयरिंग द लास्ट टाइम दे वर पेड दे फील दे आर परफॉर्मिंग देर रिलीजियस ड्यूटी वी हैव सीन बॉडी आफ्टर बॉडी अराइव हेयर एट द गाजीपुर क्रीमाटोरियम The workers here work almost 24 hours a day and then they lay their beds right here in the open air and get 2-3 hours of sleep a night. They are overworked, underpaid, unvaccinated and uninsured and it's time the government showed some support. With Pooja Arya, Meher Pandey for NDTV. Now, as heartbreaking reports come in from across the country of people struggling for oxygen, the Delhi police have recovered over 100 oxygen concentrators from two popular food joints in the Khan market area of the national capital. According to the police, 96 oxygen concentrators were recovered from Khan Chacha restaurant and nine were seized from Town Hall restaurant. These concentrators were being sold in the black market, according to the police. कल रात को हमारी टीम ने एक रेड की टाउन हॉल रेस्टोरेंट में जहां से नौ कंसेंट्रेटर्स और बरामद हुए और उसके बाद हमारे पास और इन्होंने डिस्क्लोज किया कि और भी कंसेंट्रेटर स्टोर हैं एक खान चाचा करके रेस्टोरेंट है वहां पे तो हमारी टीम वहां पे भी गई और वहां छियानवे ऑक्सीजन कंसेंट्रेटर्स स्टोर्ड मिले ट 524 कंसेंट्रेटर्स की अभी तक रिकवरी हो चुकी है और और भी इन्वेस्टिगेशन आगे बढ़ रही है वेलकम बैक द बीजेपी हैज समन बोथ द असम चीफ मिनिस्टर सर्वानंद सोनोवाल एंड टॉप मिनिस्टर हिमंता बिस्वा शर्मा टू डेली ऑन सैटरडे फॉर फाइनलाइजिंग द चीफ मिनिस्टर ऑफ असम लेट्स गो क्रॉस टू रत्नदीप चौधरी फॉर मोर ऑन दिस रत्नदीप वॉट आर यू हियरिंग वेन आर दे रीचिंग डेली well, what we are hearing from uh, uh, BGP sources is that both uh, Mr. Sharma and Chief Minister Sonwal would uh, reach Delhi by 10 a.m. and they are supposed to meet uh, with uh, Party President J.P. Nadda. We are also hearing that uh, Union uh, Home Minister Amit Shah would be part of this meeting. Also, uh, you know, uh, top party leaders. Now, uh, the party, uh, remember, had already discussed about the Assam uh, uh, you know, Chief Minister uh, issue. But what we are picking up from party sources is that while the party has already made up its mind in terms of who the next chief minister would be they they have called both the top leaders to delhi to uh, make sure that there is no differences between uh, these two top leaders because what the party would now uh, like to avoid is that any sort of you know any sort of factionalism uh, in uh, the bjp and assembly member the party uh, is already uh, after the you know after the loss in bengal the party was busy in right. terms of the post poll violence and that uh, led to this delay in terms of taking a call on who is going to be the next chief minister in Assam. But now both the yes. top leaders have been called in and after this meeting in Delhi, uh, the party is going to make a formal announcement tomorrow afternoon. That's what we are hearing from All party sources. All right, Ratandeep Chaudhary, interesting developments. Thanks very much for joining us with those details. Now, WhatsApp has scrapped the May 15 deadline for accepting new controversial privacy policy. Remember, WhatsApp had faced a huge backlash over concerns from WhatsApp users that the data was being shared 
with the parent company Facebook. WhatsApp has said that we've spent the last few months working to clear up confusion and misinformation. As a reminder, this update does not impact the privacy of uh, personal messages for anyone, while the majority of users, they say, uh, have received the, the new terms of uh, who received the new terms of service have accepted them. We appreciate that some people haven't had the chance to do so yet. No accounts will be deleted on the 15th of May because of this.